Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to show you how to change out your shifter on your 2001 to 2007 classic Chevy Silverado and GMC Sierra. I believe the 06 Plus Duramax has had the manual shift uh, option here and I was troubleshooting mine and kind of broke the switch out of it in the process but normally what you'll find here is your harness down inside your clamshell on your steering column gets damaged right here so I already went over some of the footage I had for me reassembling it with the new one and unfortunately the steering wheel got in a lot of the shots so I apologize um, if you suffer through it you're hopefully you'll get the uh, the idea of what you need to do here it's definitely not some of my best work but there's enough footage there to help you out stay tuned hey guys I want to show you now I got my new shifter in and I just wanted to show you how this one unplugged before I get too far on the disassembly this one here unplugs here you need to take your clamshell off of your steering column and this is your problem wire for your upshift and your downshift coming off of your shifter here you just get the key out you'll have your this here is normally plugged in right here it's just a clip that holds it and normally your, your wires will go bad in this area and then you get down inside here and then I used a screwdriver to release the clip so I didn't have to get uh, more into the disassembly process it popped right out so now what I need to do is take the bolt out up top and I'll show you that here in a minute so I'm hoping you guys are getting a good view of this so I'll get you a shot here up top and we'll take the shifter out and then I'll show you the whole assembly process on the way back in. All right guys, I'm here. I have my part here, my brand new shifter. I believe it was called GM Parts Direct. I'll put the link down in the description. And uh, I mean, this is a genuine GM product here. Let's get her opened up. Yes, sir. That is exactly what I had. Perfect. Okay. What you're going to need here, hopefully this light isn't too bright, is a What is that? A T27? Is that a thing? Apparently it is, because that's what size this is. There's a little screw down in here. I'll hold you down in here so you can see this. That's it. It's, gets on that screw. And then, at that point, after you do the connection underneath, it's that simple. And it pulls right out. And that's it. Like I said, you'll have to take these two tabs off, and that's it. So, uh, let's get this new one on here. Right here. Go straight down in. Put the retaining screw in. And 
deal. She's in. I'll hop back underneath. I'll put the clip on. Well, that was dumb. I failed. I failed miserably. We need to put the wheel back down here. I forgot to put my... Uh, Forgot to pick, <clears throat> excuse me, I forgot to put my boot on. Look kind of silly. At any rate, I need to take the boot off of this and then install it on this one. <clears throat> so I'll show you guys once I get this back in, I promise. I got excited and got ahead of myself and I didn't put this on. back up one more time just in case you didn't get the full effect the first time so I purposely left that off okay <clears throat> now I'll put the wheel back up I'll put that clip back on and then we can start putting our dash back together Here we go. I do believe this goes underneath this wire here, comes back over. Like I said, this wire here, <clears throat> this clip here goes into this orifice. And then this one here went into this one here. Well, that's really taunt. I don't see me gaining any. <clears throat> and this one's very snug. I don't know why it's so snug. Doesn't seem like it wants to give at all. So I may be deleting on this one just because I don't want it to be that tight. It needs to have room there because this is how your, your tilt works. Um, this one here has got some, it's, as you can see, moves freely but this one here is like nope not gonna happen so for me to run this over here i'm gonna have this so tight that yeah that doesn't make any any sense at all why that would be so tight right there let me see here let me turn this down yeah that's that's a recipe for disaster. So it is. I don't understand why they... Heck, a quarter of an inch would have made a big difference. Anyhow, let's get down here. This is where our wire plugs in to this one here. And then this white clamp is what held it on. This The white clamp right here. You can see a good show of that that'll this harness will go up inside that and then you can clamp it back up so let me get that done and i'll get back with you it's going to be a little bit much to try to i mean i can record but i can't promise you're going to be able to see anything so Okay, the electrical connection has been made. And yeah, this is gonna take this is gonna take a little bit. There's not a whole lot of room in here because of the column 
and then you have it doesn't even really matter where your wheel is it's this metal plate um let me see here it looks like i can take that off that's gonna make it a lot easier i'll i'll pop that off just so i can get that back in its original location and i'll, I'll get back with you so I got a 10 millimeter out here, and this is for this metal clamshell. I didn't take it off originally, but it's gonna be so much easier to, to pop it loose so I can get that <clears throat> put in that factory location. So it is. <clears throat> My kids are out here and every time I record they like to make noise. I have found this to be true. So if you guys have little ones, I think you'll know where I'm coming from here. Doesn't seem to matter what I do. It just seems to know. I know that that's what. If I want them to be noisy, I need to tell them to be quiet. That I'm going to make a video, and then I know that they were going to be noisy. <clears throat> okay. There we go. We got that out. That's going to make that so much easier to do. There's been some aftermarket radios and stuff put in this truck. And it's, uh, it's beyond me. But this is all aftermarket stuff. Um, the steering wheel controls bonus tape. The steering wheel controls um, still work. So um, I don't have a whole lot of complaints there so I uh, just leave it alone because everything seems to have been done pretty nice um, there I just snapped that back in place um, like I said I'm not happy with this one I'm just gonna let it ride because I think it's less damage to just let it there than it is to try to stretch it and put it in that hole it's I mean, it's in there, but as you can see, I mean, it's just, I don't know how to play a guitar, but if I did, I could, I could play a tune there, and I'm not, there's no point in doing it that way, so that's that. I'll put this back on. Actually, I'll clean that up first. I'll be, I'll be right back. Sorry, guys. I don't feel that I have OCD, but I may have some, because I, I just couldn't put that bare metal piece back in the truck it's it doesn't have a show quality paint job on it by any means but it has a little bit of protectant on it compared to what we had there before I'm not quite sure why they just put bare metal pieces inside the truck I guess they figure it's not gonna get wet so let's just put bare untreated metal inside the dash but you can see that one's rusting and it just creates uh, a place for rust and contaminants delay so I'll let this dry here for another few minutes and then I'll put it on so hang tight hi guys I'm back my my OCD fit is is over and now I have a clean bracket going back in a truck so that's all good just getting the wires out of the way so I don't pinch them. And there we go. I should have maybe grabbed my electric, but hey, you know, the longer it takes me to get this done, the longer you guys are long for the ride, you know. It's very cold here right now, and uh, as you can see, I didn't wait for it to dry. I have paint on me. 
I think I had some, I had two little runs on that and I'm like, ah, it'll be all right. It'll dry and I get my hand in it, so. So there's one snug. These wires are to the radio. Like I said, I didn't put any of that stuff in. Um, I have noticed a bunch of bonus tape, so. Whoever was working for the radio shop, they had an excess of electrical tape because everything's uh, seems to have, there's just tape laying around like they just, had extra to give away for nothing. We'll see. I'm still getting better at editing my videos, so what I'd like to do is have a, reduce this down to where it's actually viewable and people aren't just clicking off because um, the whole point is so you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, this wouldn't have needed done. I had it clipped in, but I didn't have it down that factory uh, kind of like zip tie. I didn't. I couldn't get that, so I took this whole bracket off, and it was just it was nasty. It's just like this stuff. This is pretty much untreated metal here as well. I guess they weren't figuring back in the early 2000s that they built such a good truck that it's going to be around for so long, maybe. How's that sound? That's what I'm going with. Okay, so that's on there. That's plugged in. I'm leaving that one off. Now, the next thing I need to do is this hard lower piece here, I believe. I could be wrong. Unless I want to put my... I might want to put my clamshell on next. I'm not sure... It's been so long since I ripped this off the order that I took it apart in. I believe that this would be, this is the bottom. And this goes on about like so. I need to see where I'm at here. So I'm not gonna take you on this ride because I can see so much cursing to be done here. I'm gonna get everything figured out that I where it needs to go and I'll be right back. Okay guys. I got the clamshell back on the steering column and I seriously would like to know if anybody else in America or in the world for that matter has actually successfully got the clamshell back together without bending over every one of these little clips in here. I'm pretty proud of myself. I got it together. Um, my son had to tell me a couple different times to, uh, to uh, calm down dad. <laughs> so just putting it out there. That is a very, it's just, it's, it's just pain in the jaw. It's a pain in the butt, I'll put it that way. It's not very, it's not very fun. So we got that done. Now we will, we'll throw the dash in now that we got that done. And uh, get that out of the way. I know I mentioned in one of my earlier videos, it's hard to see. But my dash was made in October of 2006 by RB, which I'm pretty sure it's Barb. I've seen other guys in, in the Duramax groups and they always pull their dash out and they say who, who made their stuff. So that's pretty cool. Um, we'll uh, get this shifter out of the way. Pop this dash in, because that's how simple it is. It just pops right in there. I'm gonna need to lower my lower my dash here a little bit. And it goes. And perfect. I don't know what I did there. That that didn't go to as planned. But the main thing with this is uh don't uh go crazy because there's tabs. I'll try to show you some of these tabs. There was a tab right here that you want to keep an eye out for. Right there. There's a hole right there where my finger is. You want to make sure you get those. Once you get those, they're like alignment pins. Once you get them started, 
then you know you're good. And there's that one there. Boom. And we're home, just like that. So that was pretty easy. And there, as I'm talking, my dash is popping back out. Let me get my key back off or I forget and drain my battery. Okay. Alrighty. I need to get to the bottom here and uh, we'll put this bottom piece on the dash. Alright guys. I don't know if you've ever heard anybody say they were some mandated to punch the baby. But I do believe that if one would have appeared in front of me, I may have punched it. That was ignorant. <clears throat> I was having issues getting that this bracket for this brake controller started. Like I said, I never I didn't install this. But I'm not saying anything bad against the guy that did install it. It's just it's just ignorant. It wasn't fun to do at all. So um, I'm gonna get these screws in, and then uh, <clears throat> wrap this up. It's always the things that aren't supposed to be difficult that are difficult. So you'll find this. holds true with working on these cars as well. Okay guys, that concludes the install of the dash, there we go, of the 2001 to 2007 classic GMC Sierra Chevy Silverado. If you're upshift and downshift isn't working there's a good chance that your your harness is damaged inside here so you're gonna have to pull that apart diagnose it throw a meter on it make sure it is bad and do what I just did here the reverse of of course like I said this just pops out you'll have to pull your gear shift down to get the, the upper dash out and then your clamshell comes apart which mine didn't even have any screws in it there's no screws holding this on on mine I do believe there's supposed to be a screw in there I'm gonna look into that but it didn't have any when I tore it apart but then again this rig has 340,000 miles on it so I'm sure from the looks of the shifter that it already had one put in it because the screw was uh definitely marked up that holds the the screw in so like I said um, that there in itself you need to have patience or you're gonna bend these tabs up and once you bend the tabs up in there it's never gonna look right you you may as well just go buy yourself a new one because it'll all be it'll be gapped and looking like crap so I think that's it for today on Man Mike's Garage. I hope I helped. I'm sorry for all the small little edit jobs, but once I got underneath there, I didn't have a whole lot of faith in that the camera work was gonna show what you guys needed to see anyway, and I was not having a good time. So for the sake of the kids, I just edited out a lot of the aggravation, and most of mine was just the placement of this bottom panel wasn't quite it I pushed up on it and it just like popped and then that screw lined up right away I fought with that for quite a bit and like I said this here is one of them take your time and you pull it apart see how it comes apart there's hooks in the back that the top the top part has a hook and it'll hook into the back and then the front part has a like a flange that goes in behind the steering wheel here so you got to get everything just happy and then it'll pop together um until then though you'll have you're gonna you're gonna have fun 
I, I don't know how to explain it other than just have patience and and give yourself a lot more time than you think you need to just pop a couple of little pieces of plastic apart or you're like I said you're gonna have a mess and I used to have a Hummer and somebody was in there messing around I think they changed the turn signal trying to get the uh, windshield washers to work and it was actually the problem was actually out on the windshield wa washer motor or the windshield wiper motor there's a circuit board right on the front which wasn't a very good engineering decision the, to put a circuit board out in the elements but that's what had went bad I replaced it for like 60 bucks and it was fine but the, like I said the previous owner got in and they mangled up the, the clamshell around the column and it, it always was gapped and hanging it just looks bad so de definitely take your time on that have fun and see you next time on Mad Mike's Garage it is a really cool truck thanks guys my son wanted to be in one of my videos and yeah he wants you to like and subscribe because this is his dad's truck good enough buddy hi Noli they uh, entertain me while I try to entertain you or at least I don't know how much entertainment it is but while I'm trying to show you guys how to get some stuff done thanks guys comment below yeah comment below if there's anything you want to see let us know Yeah, there's a frog living in our basement, and that becomes yeah. the topic of every conversation now. And so please like and subscribe, and don't get rid of the frog in your basement. Yeah. Bad Mike's Garage. Till next time.